Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So to celebrate the very new launch of the Craft Stash VIP membership, myself and some of the other wonderful and very talented Craft Stash team have got together to do this YouTube hop. And today I'm going to be doing a mini masterclass on how to use or how I use my coloured pencils. I love using coloured pencils. It's my preferred medium and I use it in many of my cards and often when I'm doing my Facebook lives, you'll see me colouring using pencils. And I always get asked how I get and achieve these results. So I'm gonna just show you a couple of little, very easy tips on how to get some coloring like this. Really simple, it's just a mini masterclass, but it's to give you a taster of the kind of content that you can expect to see if you become a Craft Stash VIP. So if you're new to this channel and you don't know nothing about it, this membership is 9 99 for the year. And with that, you get 10% off of all your purchases. There are a few exclusions, machines, gift cards, clearance, for example, but you'll also get early access to sales. You'll get early access to new releases, sneak peeks, you get priority shipping and you also get access to the Craft Stash VIP hub and there you will find exclusive content from lots of different and very talented crafters. So I think it's great value for money. So for the next week, I think I'm the third person. So there's already two behind. But if you check the links below, you'll be able to see everybody that's taking part in the hop. And again, like I said, just to get an idea of the kind of exclusive content you can expect to find if you become a VIP. Also, if you comment below, like and subscribe. Make sure you like the Craft Stash YouTube channel as well. I'll share all of those links in the description box below. But you will have a chance of winning a £25 voucher. And you could win a £25 voucher on tomorrow's video, on yesterday's video. So make sure you go back, watch the ones if you've not already watched those and watch the ones tomorrow and so on and comment. And you've got is it six chances, I think, in total to win a £25 voucher to use at Craft Stash. So all the information to become a Craft Stash VRP will be also linked below this video, along with supplies and all that good stuff. But let's get started and let me show you how to create these beautiful coloured images and this lovely spinning reveal wheel card it's so much fun love to putting this one together so let's get started so i've stamped my images that i need to color using the versafine onyx black this is a really nice ink pad for detail and you can see there even the smallest details in the design there it picks them up really nicely i've also got a selection of my pencils ready here and i've just stamped the images here towards the top of this white piece of card and then I can just kind of use the bottom part to scribble the colours. I already know the ones I'm using but I, if you often watch me during Facebook lives and things like that I will you know test out which pencils I want to mix together. So I sharpen my pencils using this electric pencil sharpener here. I'll have it linked below the videos but you know lots of people would like to use just a normal pencil sharpener it's entirely up to you. So all I would do first of all is just lay down some colour there and then choose another darker shade that I think will sit and blend nicely with that colour. I'm only going to use two shades today, but you could use as many shades as you want. But it's quite nice just to test there. But whatever, you know, paper you're using to test your pencils, make sure it's the same paper or card that you've used to stamp your images, because then it will be exactly the same. So I'm just using these wax pencils here choose your pencils of choice it's entirely up to you I'm again I'm not going to go into all that kind of detail today we're just going to do some simple coloring just to show you some easy ways to just lift your images a little bit more I'm just going to turn it around here so it's a bit easier to color and I'm just going to lay down this lighter color quite lightly and I'm just going to cover the whole flower all of the petals now the lighter you start off with the easier it will be to add more darker shades or just to burnish the colour a little bit better. If you go too heavy to start with, it will be very hard to layer on top, especially with a wax pencil. So always go very light to start with. And although it's hard to see, but I am actually doing circular motions as I colour. So I'm colouring like this and dragging it rather than like this. You'll find as well, you'll be more heavy handed if you colour just up and down like that. Whereas if you go in a circle, you can be much more lighter. And that way you won't get those lines and it's easier to blend the colours. So gentle does it to start with. Just very lightly lay that colour down. Now, for some people, this is all you may do when you colour. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a very easy way to just lift it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my deepest colour all around the centre of the flower here. And I'm going to flick the colour out. So what I'm doing is 
going a little bit heavier and flicking the colour. And you can see I'm heavier around here and I'm very, very light flicking that colour out. Now, when this lighter part here hits this colour that I've already laid down, it will already start to then naturally blend together. So using that technique there, I'm just going to come right in to the bottom here and I'm just flicking that colour out. And just by doing that alone, it's now created a bit of shape to that petal. So it's dark here because there's all of these petals bunched together, so not a lot of light can hit it. But as those petals come out further, there's a lot more light hitting them. And this is what we would call the highlighted area. And I'm going to work on that a little bit more in a minute. But that alone there could be enough. Just by doing that, so if you're just starting off colouring, lay that lighter colour down and then just by adding that tiny little darker colour on top, you just create more shape. And I'll just show you this example here that I've got. This one I spent a bit more time on, but I also added that same technique to the ends of the petals here and brought and flicked the colour in and then I've got the highlight running all the way around the petals and it just looks like the petals are curved as opposed to flat. So with this next one this petal here is kind of overlapping this one below there would be more shadow under this part here so I've just a little bit heavier and then again I'm just dragging that colour out flicking it up from the middle there like so. And then again, I'm going to come to this one here. This petal is overlapping this one slightly. So I'm just going to come under that one there and just bring that colour around. Flick that colour out and then back to this one here. Like so. And then again, this one's kind of overlapping this one slightly. So I'm just going to bring that colour up along that side and then Like so. Now, this is the darkest colour I'm going to use on this flower today. But if I had, but if I wanted to maybe bring in even some black, I could still go over the top of this darker colour here because I've still gone quite light over those areas. So again, I'm just going to bring that one up a bit higher there, and then just flick that colour. Now, if you start to see a shine on your image, that's what they call wax bloom, and that is just a build up, and you will probably struggle to add any more colour on top of that. It's not a bad thing. I actually quite like it on, I think, some things that we use on our cards because it just gives you that natural shine. But it does then tell you that, you know, it's, there's, I wouldn't bother trying to lay more colour over the top of that because it would just sit on the t on the surface as opposed to actually sit in the card. So I'm just bringing that one under there a little bit. And just keep working it around. So this one is over that one there. So I'm just creating shadow there and then just flick that colour out. But this is just using two colours but you can also do this with one colour. So if I just use this pencil as an example and just very lightly lay that colour down. So imagine I've just coloured a petal, okay, very lightly just like I did with this lighter shade here. Now by just simply pushing down harder Again, just like I've done on the petals, like so. And then just very slightly put a little bit more pe pressure. Again, I'm doing those circular motions. And then again, if you really want to go even harder, just now I'm, you know, I wouldn't again be able to put much more colour on top of that. Just pull that out. You can now see that nice gradient that I've got just using one pencil, but that could be the petal of the flower. And that's just using one colour. So don't complicate it. You know, if you're just starting out or maybe you've had pencils for quite a long time and you just colour, you know, just like this. Just practice, just going in a little bit harder and then pulling out that colour. I will be doing a more detailed masterclass where I'll be using more colours. But for now, I just think this is a really nice way to start off and just get familiar with your pencils. Find the colours that you like, find the kind of mix and kind of go from there. You can see there you've got quite a nice effect. So again, going back to this one, I'm just going to lay down 
that colour the same way that I've done with the others. So I'll just speed this bit up. Okay, so I've laid down all of the darker colour there. Now I'm going to go back in with that lighter one and I'm going to go back over the darker up into that lighter area doing the same technique, just flicking it out. And what I've now created is just that nice gradient from dark to light. So again, that lighter colour, just flicking it out. Yeah, do some circular blending there as well. And you're just wanting to create that, that lovely blend without any harsh lines. So you should now start to see the whole thing soften and just that nice blend on each petal like so. For the centres of the flowers, I'm going to use a brown. So I'm just going to very lightly lay this brown colour down. I'm not going to colour each individual section there. I don't think there's any need to. And then I've got a darker brown here. And I'm just going to keep that very dark right around the edge. Because again, you imagine it's curved. You've got like a dome shape there. It would be very, very dark. And then I'm using, again, very small circular motions. Just pulling some of that colour out and then I'm going to come back in with that lighter colour going back over the dark, bringing it into the middle and I'm going to leave the very centre and you should again see that highlight. I'm going to use some accent glaze on this once the card's all put together and that will add a nice shine as well. So now I'm going to move on to this flower here, exactly the same technique that I've showed you. I've just got two different colours here, so I've got this light pink and then a dark pink. And I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to colour very lightly every petal. Okay. And then I've got this darker shade here. And again, starting from the centre of the petal, I can go in quite dark, just push down a little harder and then flick the colour out. Darker and then flick that colour out. Tap, 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 tap. You often hear this sound when I'm doing my live craft alongs. And if you haven't joined those before, I do them every Wednesday and Friday. Wednesdays are at 2 p.m. And, and Fridays are at 10 a.m. And I do a lot of colouring. And I do exactly the same technique as I'm sharing now. This is my, my preferred style, my way of colouring. Everybody will have a different way. And it's about finding what works best for you. But I would say just practice find a very simple image, something like this with a, a flower that is, you're looking at it straight on. So it's pretty equal all the way around and just go from there. There are lots of tools online that you can download like starter sheets with simple circles and squares and practice your gradient coloring, doing things like this and then work up to your images. But I just thought it'd be quite nice for, you know, there's quite a few people who watch me who can already, you know, colour their images in, but they just want to just add a little bit extra to them. Sometimes by simply changing the pressure of the pencil will be enough because it would just lay down that colour that little bit darker. OK, now I'm not going to do it on this one, but this is the same image which I showed you before. But you can see where then I've gone to this end and brought it in. But because I've not done it on any of the other images that I've coloured, it will look a bit odd if I did it just on this one. But you could just go a little bit heavier there and then drag that colour back in. So you get again, like I said, that highlight. But I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to come back in with the lighter colour because right now I can see in my screen, you can see around here, it's, it doesn't really blend too well. It's still quite dark and then light. I want to get this a much smoother gradient from that dark to light. So that's where I'm going to come back in with this lighter colour. Start over the dark colour and just start blending and pulling that to the end there. Not right to the end because I want to keep that highlighted bit there, but you can see already compared to this one how much smoother that looks. And that's just by going over the darker colour, bringing it back in to the lighter. OK, so I'm much happier with that now. And then again, I'm going to add the same brown. So just very lightly all over the middle there. And then that darker right around the edge. 
and then just little circular motions so you've not got that harsh line and then if you feel the need to go back in again you can go with that lighter brown like so okay then I'm just going to do the same again with the leaves here so I've already got the green colors that I've used on the rest so I've got my lightest green here I'm just laying that down like so and then the darker color right down into the bottom of the leaf there the leaf there and just flick that up that color out again right down and just flick the color out and you can see now instantly how much more dimension that's given to those leaves they look quite 3d now and that's another thing as well i'm going to be die cutting these but if you were you know stamping this onto your card like as is like this if you grab a gray pencil and just go around one side and just kind of add a little bit of shadow just very lightly but just stay to the same side you can go around all of it as well again it's all to do with light source but i don't want to go into that in too much detail today and again around here and now and what that will do is it will look like it's slightly lifted off of the paper and you can go in much darker just right just along the side there like so and now it looks like that image is slightly raised and lifted off of the paper so I'm just going to finish this one again, doing exactly the same technique. And then if you just want to smooth that out again, just go in with that lighter colour. So that's all the images coloured. So I'm now going to get these die cut and then I'm going to put the reveal wheel together. So you can see here I've got all of my other images all coloured. They look really nice and they're all cut. So this is the reveal wheel die set. So I've already cut out the largest square here in the craft card. I've then cut this one here in this lighter like sand colour. And then using the aperture die, I've cut my window. So I've just cut it a few times. I'm not going into detail today on all of that i have lots of reveal reveal wheel tutorials already up on the channel and i'll share the playlist here so if you want to watch that in a bit more detail on how to cut all of these parts then check out those tutorials i've then cut the wheel here and i've stamped the images and the sentiments so i've got happy blooming birthday will be at the top and as you turn the wheel you'll get your you'll get the bees coming round, and then this sentiment forever flowers for my forever friend and then again the other bee and then finishing with the sentiment again. You also want to cut this one here and that's the internal wheel for this one to spin. I've also then got my six by six card blank and it's going to be a top folding card. The stamp set that I used for the flowers is this one here, flowers and foliage. So I've used these three for the coloring demo, but you've got these sunflowers and you've got these other flowers here and lots of other leaves. The sentiment, is this one here forever flowers for my forever friend is from the beautiful bouquet set the bees are from one of my very old stamp sets this is garden delights the other sentiment happy blooming birthday is from my floral sentiments and then i think i'm going to be using this arrow stamp here to stamp along the side so first of all i'm going to stick this one down I think I want to add a little bit more detail to this piece here so I'm going to use my linen embossing folder I'm just going to sit that in the middle and run that through my die machine there you can see how lovely that one is next I'm going to use my brads these are the five mil it doesn't matter on the color I'm going to be actually covering it you then want to open the brad up so it's nice and wide like this you're going to pop it through this one it may move around or even come out of this piece because when you make it a larger opening you're making the circle slightly larger but once we secure it to the card that will stay in place but just kind of pop it in there and then i'm going to feed it through just bring that in a little bit through that one there and then through this one here and then open it out and you'll see it open and you want it to 
open right out so you can see through. Okay. And you can already now test the wheel there. Okay. But like I said, that's going to move for a minute until we secure this. So next you want to add your foam tape. So I just like to add a piece right through the middle there and go over the brad, but you don't want to stick anything on the wheel. You need to keep the wheel itself, this one, completely free. And then I'm just going to cut a little square for each corner. Like so, take all the backing off and just make sure that's all in place. And then just sit it over your card so you've got a nice equal border. And now, because you've got the foam underneath, you'll be able to just turn that wheel and see all of the images, like so. Now I want to cover the whole of the card with the flowers. Um, I'm also going to stamp the little arrow, but I'm going to pop this on high speed now. Once everything's stuck down, I think it looks so pretty. Now I'm just going to use some of my accent glaze in the centres to the card. And when it catches the light, it looks really nice. It always goes on cloudy, but it will dry clear. How pretty is that? So I'm just going to leave that to dry. So I hope you've enjoyed this mini colouring masterclass from me today. Um, I've loved putting this card together. I think it looks so pretty. I love the bees. I think it looks really nice when the bees just flying over the top there. That lovely. And like I said, um, it's just to give you a taster of the kind of content you can expect to see by becoming a Craft Stash VIP. I've got some lovely things already filmed, ready to share. And I hope that you find the video content useful, informative and value for money. As always, I will link the product that I've used in this card in the description box below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've maybe never used coloured pencils before. Maybe you're going to give it a go now. I'd love to hear. Remember as well, if you comment below, you will be in with a chance of winning a £25 craft stash voucher and Hillary will be choosing those winners and that will all be announced soon. So keep an eye out for that. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon. Take care. Bye.